subscribe to the Light Sports and Ultra Light Flyer web video magazine with hundreds and hundreds of videos now online, including air show coverage, Rotax engine tech tips, Rotax 377, 447, 503, 532, and 582 engine rebuilding videos, each two hours in length, propeller maintenance, advisories, and repairs, VRS parachute saves, Bing carb updates, and much, much more. Get a yearly subscription at www.ultralightflyer.com. And this is an airplane that's caused a bunch of people to walk by and go, what is that? Including me and including the people from Rands. This is actually a Rands airplane. It's not a Xena 601 or 650. But what has caught people's attention here, this is not the first one I understand, but the first one we've seen here and most people have seen of a 3300 Jabiru engine installation on the S19. Pete Karate from uh, Jabiru USA and Orion Aircraft. Uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, installation, what you tried to achieve with it, and what your goals with it. Well, we want to do this to, um, we identified the Rans S19 as what looked to us like a really nice aircraft and would be a popular aircraft among the home builders. And we're in the business of selling engines, so this was identified as a, a growth area for our engines if we could come up with a firewall forward kit that would allow the Jabiru engine to be dropped into a RANS S19 fuselage and then we expected our normal better performance than the 100 horse Rotax and you'd expect that with 120 horse and we got it so now we have a uh, uh, we built our own cowl and we gave it uh, I think a little better look a little more aggressive look than the RANS cowl with its little horizontal slots and kind of stub nose um, Performance-wise, you, you had to lengthen it out a little bit to accommodate yes. this, and I see yeah. some quite a bit of space back here too. So, yeah, uh, when we were calculating our weight and balance, we we uh, said the engine has to be about here, and it turned out to be right. Um, so it does give us a little room behind it to put a carb heat system uh, filter box for the for the uh, you know carb heat uh, that uh, worked pretty well. Uh, we've developed a bunch of firewall forward kits over the years and usually we put it together and then we have to tweak the cooling and adjust a little of this or the angle of the engine or something. This one we put it on the airplane, went and flew and it flew hands off in exactly the way we wanted it first time. Cooling was perfect. Uh, we were just really happy with the way it flies. Now for those that don't know, firewall forward kit, because if you're a full airplane ready to fly buyer, you might not really know what that means. It means that they basically have an airplane back here that's the same as it is from Rand's, but from the firewall up to here, including things like motor mount, of course the engine, how exactly the prop is put and, and where it's positioned and what prop. That's all part of what Jabiru USA can sell to an S19 builder. He can now select this engine or the 912 engine. But So I flew in this airplane earlier and we often hear from people, uh, they use an analogy to a sewing machine which people perceive as running extremely smoothly. And a lot of times that analogy really isn't so accurate. It's a nice thing to say but I gotta tell you this is about as close to reality in a sewing machine up here for an engine as I've experienced. It was delightfully smooth, powerful, ran fast, flew slow well and that it all came sort of out of the box and did all that stuff right suggests maybe you figured out how this is supposed to work. Yeah, this is a six cylinder and six cylinders are inherently smoother than the four cylinders, whether it's a four cylinder Continental or Lycoming or Rotex. It's just the, uh, the position of the pistons on the cam and so forth, or the, on the crankshaft, uh, sixes are just inherently smoother. And this one is smooth. It was just great. But one of the things you normally have to deal with is cooling on these. And you, Pete was telling me and some of the other folks from Jabiru were telling me some interesting things about this uh, box. There's a fiberglass box up here and it aids the cooling of the cylinder temperatures, or cylinder, uh, each cylinder. And there, you can kind of see up here on the top, there are three places where there are some internal uh, little veins, I'll call them. Deflectors. And they are different heights and they, you say you start out with them a little long and you sort of trim down so that yeah. the air gets deflected into each cylinder correctly. Right. Every airplane is a little bit different uh, in how the flow goes through the cowl. And like any air-cooled engine, you have to make high pressure above the cylinders and low pressure below so that air will flow through. 
make well, sense. To balance the flow, we have these little deflectors coming down about a half an inch from the top of this plenum. And we start out with them a little bit long, and then we go and fly. And if we find that the front cylinder is plenty cool, but the ones behind it need to cool down a little bit, well, we shave a little off of this front deflector. Well, that will cool down the one behind it. If we still need more for the back cylinder to cool down, we'll shave a little bit off of the, the uh, center deflector, and that will raise the temperature of the center cylinder and, and lower the temperature of the rear cylinder. And after four or five little adjustments there, you can balance your temperatures from front to rear quite nicely that way. Now, the other thing that people are concerned about when they're buying an, an engine, especially a firewall forward package, is the cost of rebuild, the warranties, and that type of thing. Can you guys run through that with me? Sure. The warranty is a year from uh, the date of purchase. Or uh, if the engine start is going to be delayed because of finishing the airplane, uh, it's a year from the first engine start. Warranty... Uh, a year or 200 hours, whichever comes first. Um, rebuilds, we have a 2,000 hour TBO. Uh, the full rebuild cost on this engine is about $6,000 to $6,500 if we do it in our shop. There is a 1,000 hour, they call it a minor top overhaul, and that'll cost uh, in the neighborhood of $2,500 to $3,000 uh, if there's no abnormal things in there, it's uh, probably a little below $3,000 on the average to do the 1,000-hour top overhaul. Now, did you not tell me that you've got some, they don't all have to come back to your uh, facility, which uh, uh, Jabber USA is located in Shelbyville, Tennessee, quite central to the overall United States, but all engines don't have to come back there for overhaul, you told me, I believe. That's correct. Um, Jabru has no objection to uh, a local AMP repairman doing a field overhaul. We don't require them to come back to an authorized uh, repair center. This is a very simple engine. In concept, it's set up a lot like a Continental or a Lycoming. It's just made in a much more modern way. It's all CNC machine. Uh, if an AMP or an engine mechanic out there has had Lycoming or Continental experience and is willing to um, uh, adapt to the new way that this is made, read the manual, there's nothing that he's going to find in here that is uh, so strange that he'd not want to work on a Jabiru engine. Now, these engines are also available, I believe, Dan, in both a four-cylinder and a uh, six-cylinder? Yeah, four-cylinder and a six-cylinder. The four-cylinder is 85 horsepower, six-cylinder is 120. So, if we want to get more information, where are we going to go for all this? Well, you can go to uh, usjabiru.com on the internet. Or the Australian Jabiru site. This is an Australian engine, Australian design, uh, and that's www.jabiru.net.au for Australia. And Dan, you just mentioned you just flew this airplane, so I'm expecting there's probably a flight report coming out soon. I think there probably is, and it's going to be a nice one because I really have such a lovely day and it ran so smoothly. How can you not get down and be excited? But two more questions I want to ask you. One of them has to do with the cost of uh, this package, not necessarily comparing it to the Rotax, but there is some savings to be recognized there. Tell us just briefly about that. The engine itself is uh, $17,500 currently. Um, and we're at the, the uh, Midwest, uh, tell me where we're at, Dan. We're at the Midwest LSA Expo 2010, so these numbers are subject to change when you're, if you're watching this video at a later time, you have to contact US Jabiru about that, but today, 17500 Yeah. And then the firewall forward kit is $3,750. And the firewall forward kit, unlike a lot of firewall forward kits, it includes the propeller. Yeah. So you have everything. Yeah, usually it's sort of here to here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is a nose wheel mount that comes from RANS that's on the front side of the firewall. Everything else that you see on the front side of the firewall here comes with the firewall forward kit. Including, including the cowling. This nicely uh, done aluminum spinner, the cowls, oil cooling system, carb heat system, fuel system from the firewall forward, throttle cables, choke cables, oh I don't know, all kinds of stuff comes with it. Uh, everything you'll need to bolt it all together and then go fly. Now, is it on the list then for the uh, light sport aircraft with this engine? Or is it an uh, experimental? This is an experimental amateur built with this engine. This particular airplane? 
but yes. you could, or if Rands chose, and they haven't made their mind up about this yet, this is partly to show them that it worked so well, and their folks did come and fly with you, I understand, mm -hmm. but if Rands wanted to, they could offer, this engine's all approved for ASTM, the airplane's approved, they could put them together and it would be absolutely fine as an out-the-door factory built. Right. Right. Rands would have to do a little testing to prove compliance to the uh, light sport standards. And if they offered this as a factory built SLSA aircraft, then they could sell an ELSA kit and it could be built at home as an experimental light sport airplane. But what we've done here is an amateur built airplane and in the logbook we have all the numbers to show that the speeds, weights, uh, capacities, everything falls within the light sport parameters. So it's eligible to be flown by someone with light sport pilot privileges. So last question I wanted to ask, uh, there's quite a few of these engines out. This is not a new unproven engine. I believe the figure was about 6,000 in 45 countries. Correct Six, me if that's wrong. That's correct. 6,000 engines out there around the world. Uh, Jabru USA has sold about 2,000 of those 6,000 engines. So there's uh, altogether probably approaching uh, maybe 3,000 Jabru engines in the USA now. So they're becoming a pretty common aircraft engine found in uh, all kinds of home builds. And then uh, lately, uh, since Light Sport has come along, we're in a number of Light Sport airplanes as well. So Jabiru engine, definitely one of our uh, important components of the LSA field and uh, really nice to speak with Pete Karate of Jabiru USA today and uh, to find out more about this new exciting installation we've seen here. And if we wanted to follow you along on our flight report, where would we get that information? Well, I'll have it up on my website, uh, bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.